today I'm going to show you how you can get four beginner friendly sewing projects out of one fat quarter of fabric. A fat quarter is half a metre of fabric cut in half and we're going to get four beginner sewing projects out of this. Start by folding the fabric with a selvage edge folded over oops, like this and you want to leave about four and a half inches at the bottom. So four and a half inches at the bottom and then I cut out pattern pieces first and then I place, place my pattern pieces on the fabric, pin them on and cut around them. This piece here, which is eight by seven inches, you need to place on the fold. So you pin it to the fabric with the top edge on the fold and we don't cut across the top edge, we just cut down the bottom and two sides. And these two pieces we cut all the way around. And the fourth piece is just this strip across the bottom. It's about 21 inches and it should be about four and a half inches wide. So let's get started. Cut your fabric as per this diagram. Remembering the eight by seven inch piece needs to be cut on the fold. So it will be one continuous piece of fabric. Take the 8 by 8 inch piece of fabric and with right sides facing fold down the centre to mark the centre mark. Next measure 1.5 inch inches down the right hand side from the top and put a mark there. Then draw a line from the centre mark to the mark you made 1.5 inches down the side. Then you can either cut this line with a pair of scissors or I'm going to use my rotary cutter and cut using my ruler making a nice straight line to cut that corner off. Next cut the interfacing making it slightly smaller than the pattern pieces. I made mine 3 8 of an inch smaller on each side because that's my seam allowance. Next iron your interfacing onto your fabric following the manufacturer's instructions. If you notice here I'm using a, a medium weight I, um, interfacing on one side and on the other side I've chosen to use a fusible wadding just to give a little bit more support to my glasses. When you fuse your interfacing to both sides place your fabrics right sides together so you want right sides facing and both of the interfacings on the outside. Then either pin or clip as I'm doing all the way around the sides and then you need to mark about a three inch gap at the bottom where you're going to turn it the right side out. Now so taking a three eighths of an inch seam allowance starting at one of the marks we made and we're going to sew all the way around until we get to the other mark remembering to back tack at the start and the finish and when we get to the corner we need to finish with our needle down. If you haven't quite gone far enough as I haven't there do another stitch leave your needle down turn around and then carry on sewing and we do that at each of the corners. Clip any excess thread close to the seams and then clip all corners. And then we need to trim all the seams to about an eighth of an inch from the stitching. So we trim all the way round apart from where we left the opening and where we left the opening we're going to leave it, we're not going to trim that part of the seam. Now we need to turn our glasses case the right side out. So through the opening that we left we're going to gradually pull all the right side of the fabric through that opening until it's all turned the right way out. Now using a special tool I push out the corners. If you don't have a special tool to do this you can use the point of your scissors when they're closed or a knitting needle or any object that's pointed but not too sharp that it's going to make a hole. Take over to your ironing board or ironing mat and we're going to give it a good press paying particular attention to the opening we left at the bottom and making sure that all of the side seams are nicely pressed. Next we're going to top stitch along the top edge. When I top stitch I usually change the stitch length to number three and I sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then I trim any loose ends. Then fold our glasses case in half making sure that all the side seams match and then we either pin or clip all the way round. Then we're going to sew the two sides together starting at the bottom corner sewing across the bottom then turning around and going all the way up the side right up to the top about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way round. Back tacking at the start and the finish and sewing all the way to the top on the side and that's your first project finished. A lovely glasses case and on to project two which is a small gift card wallet. So you need the piece of fabric which measures seven and a half inches by four and a half inches. 
interface one side on the wrong side of the fabric with some medium weight interfacing and then with right sides together pin both pieces of fabric together and either clip or pin all the way around leaving a small gap so that we can turn our wallet the right side out when we finish sewing it. When I finish pinning or clipping I just put a couple of marks so I know where to leave a gap when I'm sewing. Take your fabric, your pinned fabric, over to the sewing machine and you're going to start sewing at the bottom where you left the mark to leave your opening. Taking a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and remember to back tack at the start and the finish. And then you're going to continue sewing all the way around till you come to the other mark, leaving an opening at the bottom. Now you need to cut all your corners. So cut each corner off close to the stitching but don't cut through the stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching this makes it easier to turn the right side out then trim close to the seams apart from at the bottom end where you've got where you've left the opening where you leave that at the three eighths of an inch but the rest of the way around you can trim off to one eighth of an inch but don't trim around the opening Next we need to turn our fabric the right side out through the hole that we left. Keep reaching in and pulling out the right side of the fabric until it's all turned through the right side. Then we just need to poke out the corners with a sharpish object. Now we need to give it a quick press with our iron, paying particular attention to the sides and especially the opening we left for turning the right way in. Then take over to the sewing machine and top stitch along the edge where you left the opening. I've actually clipped it first as well. Clip the ends and that's the gap neatly closed. Now fold up the edge we have just sewed by, by about two and a half inches. This makes the little pocket that we're going to put our card into and then the top uh, folds over. Clip the rest of the way round, ready for sewing. I just like to check it's um, right before I sew it so I'm just measuring to see that it's all level. Now take over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around about an eighth of, a, an, eighth of an inch from the edge sewing carefully all the way around back tacking at the start and the finish. Now we just need to add one single plastic snap fast or you could sew on a press stud if you wish. If you have any of the plastic um, snap fasteners please follow um, the instructions on how to attach them but make sure you get it in the centre so I measure the width of my purse and then I find the centre and when I've got one in one side I then use that to make a mark on the other side where I'm going to put my next one. But if you don't have one of these tools and you don't have the plastic snaps, you can just sew a Preston on and that would be absolutely fine. And that's our second project finished. Now we're on to the third item, which is a drawstring bag. And you'll need the piece of fabric that we placed on the fold, eight inches long and seven inches wide. So next we make a mark on the top edge, about one and a half inches or 4.5 centimeters down from the top raw edges. Then pin or clip down both sides, but leave the top one and a half inches because that will be left open. We're going to start sewing from the mark on one of the sides, continue sewing all the way down to the bottom edge. I'm taking a three eighths of, three -eighths of an inch seam allowance here. Do the same on both sides, remembering to leave the top one and a half inches open. Clip the corners at the bottom, and then I like to pinking shear close to my seam on both sides but stopping before I get to the top. Now fold the top one and a half inch seam allowance down so it matches with the sides. So just fold it down and then iron it. And then I like to press all four sides down with an iron. It's a three eighth of an inch seam allowance there. And I do that on all four sides. This is going to form the casing to put our ribbon or tape through depending on what we decide to use. Take over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch these one and a half inches that we've just turned and are on four sides. Remember to back tack at the start and finish and keep as close to the edge of the seam as you can. The next job is to make the casing for our ribbon to go through. Oh sorry I'm just going to clip some loose ends first then I'm going to make the casing for the ribbon to go through. I'm going to start by turning down the top edge by about a quarter of an inch. I do the same on both sides, pressing with my iron as I go. And then when I've done that, I turn the edge over again and the top edge is going to meet the mark that I left open, where I left it open. So the original mark that I put on for the one and a half inches, I'm folding down to that and then I'm going to pin both sides down. All the way along on both sides. This forms the casing for my ribbon to go through. 
so close to the edge of the casing, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And we do exactly the same on both sides, remembering to back tack at the start and the finish of each seam. So that's our casing made. All we need to do now is thread our ribbon through the casings we've just made. I cut two lengths of ribbon 24 inches long, each 24 inches long, one for each side. But before threading the ribbon, I need to just turn it the right way out. So I turn it the right way out and then I'll give it a quick iron and then thread my ribbon through. So I'm using a safety pin to do this. I put the safety pin through the ribbon and then I thread the safety pin all the way around one side of my bag, come out and then I'm going to go back in again all the way around down the other side and then I tie a knot in the end to secure this end before going on to do the ribbon on the other side. When I've done the first side, I then need to do the other side. So I thread my next ribbon up onto my safety pin and then starting at the other opening on the other side, I thread all the way round again, coming out at the first side and then going back in so that my ribbon will end on the other side. So I should end up with two ends of ribbon on each side. So I just need to tie a knot on the second side and then I'm going to cut the ends at the diagonal to stop them from fraying. And there we have it, our finished drawstring bag. Now we're on to the final project which is a hair scrunchie. So the first thing we're going to do is turn under one end by about a quarter of an inch and just iron this over. So we're ironing on, this is the wrong side, so we've turned a little bit of the right side over to the wrong side to form a hem. Then with right sides together, fold in half lengthways and then we're going to clip all the way along. Take over to the sewing machine and taking a 3 8 of an inch seam, sew all the way down the side. Starting at the top where we turned under the hem, remembering to back tack at the start and the finish of the seam. Then snip off the loose ends, then turn the right side out, gradually pulling the right side of the fabric through one of the ends and keep going until all of the fabric is the right side out. Then we're ready to start threading elastic, elastic through. So you'll need a safety pin and a piece of elastic. I cut a piece of quarter inch wide elastic to 10 inches long and then thread this onto my safety pin. I start pushing it through my scrunchie and before the end disappears inside my scrunchie, I'm going to pin it just to make sure it doesn't pull all the way through. And then I carry on threading the elastic all the way through to the end. Then I take the two ends of elastic and I tie them in a nice tight knot so that they're not going to come undone. Now push the raw end inside the end that's turned over, ready for stitching. So you should have a nice neat edge on the outside and the raw edge is pushed onto the inside. Tie a knot in your needle and thread and we're going to slip stitch all the way around. I do have a video on how to slip stitch and I will share a link in the description below so you can watch that and then you'll know how to slip stitch if you don't already know. Keep slip stitching all the way around the scrunchie until you end up back where you started and then we'll just tie a knot and finish off. And that's our fourth and final project finished. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, could you please like and subscribe? These, this is what your finished items should look like. You should have, you should have one glasses case, one little drawstring bag, oops, one little drawstring bag, a little card holder which you could either use as a gift card holder or you could use to keep a credit card in and a scrunchie. So there we have four things all made out of one fat quarter of fabric.